All right, as we continue on here, um, we're going to build our knowledge about circular motion, and we're going to start with a circle itself. And we're going to define uniform circular motion As motion along a rotation along a, around our circle, uh, such that as our object rotates from one place to another, there is a velocity vector tangent to the circle. We make little tangents. And so this is the velocity at position one, and this is the velocity vector at position two. And in uniform circular motion, these velocity vectors always have the same magnitude. But notice their direction changes. And so we can think about it, uh, there's a uniform speed that a particle sitting on the edge of our rotating thing will be moving at. Whatever's rotating in a circle, particle is always going the same speed, though its vector changes. And that vector is always tangent to the circle. And we, we sometimes call this the instantaneous velocity um, or the tangent velocity. Um, or the speed of rotation, right? We'll have different names for it, but the speed's going to be the same. And so what we can do here is we're gonna zoom in on this and we'll make some, some things about this. Using, let me zoom in, let's make a big circle. Let me put my velocity vector, my radii is in place. And so we have some change in angle theta. We're going to talk about the, a change. And generated with this change will be tangential velocity vectors, tangent to the circle. So notice the position of this right now is almost all in the x direction. Well, here it has an x and y component if we were thinking about it in xy terms. So that's V1, um, and that's V2. Now, if the speed is, say, is staying the is the same, but it's changing direction, there needs to be a vector to turn it. There needs to be something to turn it. This is accelerating. Because we said um, in acceleration, right, it is my change in velocity over time. And these vectors are changing. They're not going any faster, but their direction is changing. And so what we can look at here is I can take these two vectors and I can pick them up and I can put them together. Okay. I take this one because the vectors are magnitude and, and direction. And so this has a direction this way this has a direction this way, so I'll grab them together and I'll put them together. And so I get V1 over V2. And the angle between these, due to similar triangles, if I make a right triangle out of this, and I make a right triangle out of this because it's tangent, the angle that differentiates these is the same as the angle in the middle of the circle. And so, moving from the velocity vector 1 to velocity vector 2, that's my change in angle. And so we can say the change in the velocity vector is my position 2 minus position 1. And our definition of acceleration was
change in our velocity vector over the change in time. And so we do have an acceleration component here. The thing is, the acceleration component only changes direction. Um, and so at any given time, this is moving perpendicular to the radius. This is moving perpendicular to the radius. So to turn it, I need a, a vector component that acts as turning. And so my acceleration is parallel to the radius. There is no acceleration component in the direction of motion. If there was an acceleration component in the direction of motion, it would be getting faster. And so we call, the, call this a centripetal towards the center acceleration. And so our vectors look like, if I take any one of these vectors, I take V1 and my acceleration component, they're at right angles to each other. Because, and I, I guess the mental image, if I am moving in this direction in a straight line to turn without speeding up, my turning direction has to be towards the center. If I have any acceleration that's not directed towards the center, V2 is going to be faster. And so V2 would be faster in magnitude than V1. And so for uniform circular motion, if all these velocities stay the same, then the acceleration is always towards the center. It always turns. And we call it centripetal or radial acceleration. I'll use radial acceleration a lot. And we get a very unique equation out of this that's going to be useful for us beginning our translations here. Right, if we have these things coming across and um, these working out, then in what I can say is that my acceleration is equal to the, my change in velocity vectors divided by time. And because my velocity vectors are equal to each other, well, let's work this out here. Let me move my screen over a bit here. Let me move this around here. So I'm moving a page here. And let's work this out. So we're going to take this circle down and we're, we're going to look at the vectors that we get out of this because we, we want to get a neat thing about our radial acceleration. We want to figure out how fast this changes. So let's see here. Oops, wrong computer. Let's pull this down. All right, so we know the direction now, and we want to, want to get the magnitude of that acceleration. How quickly is that acceleration towards the center so that we can um, play out? So um, we'll look at, we had our delta V, which is V2 minus V1. And what we want to then say is what we can say, V2 will be equal to delta V plus V1. We can move from, or V1 plus delta V, we can look at it any way that we want. Now, we know that we're going to move across some small arc length, some change in arc length. We're going to make it really, really small. And so we're, we're going to say that's delta L. And so I'll make another triangle here. And it's an arc, but, but because our arc is really small, we're going to pretend it's a line. Right? If you get really, really close to, 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 a, to a circle, it looks flat. You're standing on a circle right now on the Earth, and it, it has a flat a, a appearance to it. So for what we're going to do here, I'm going to say that delta L that and that's v1 to v2 right um, across delta L and so we can say that my change in velocity my, my change in velocity let me get my equation right here 
is equal to triangle back. Do I have my other triangle here? Oh, here, this triangle here. These are the radii. I'm trying to get my radii back. So I'll put these two triangles here. So I'm going to put these two triangles next to each other. Just trying to look for my other triangle. And so this one has the delta L on it. And that had my delta theta and R and R, and this here is my delta V. Okay, when I came back here, if I sum my two vectors together, that gives me my delta V. Now, there's something neat I can say about these triangles. They're going to be similar triangles. Because we've made them so they have the same angles, they're similar triangles, which means the ratio of components are the same. So delta V over, and I'll just pick a side, um, V2 is equal to the ratio of delta L over R. Right. So because I grab these vectors across and I can say, hey, this triangle is similar to this triangle, then my ratios of V1 to delta V is the same as my ratio of R to L, delta V to V1. But V1 equals V2, so I can say the change in V over whatever that constant speed is, is proportional to my change in length times R. And remember, we're making this really, really small, so this is really, you know, approximate, because this would be delta S it's an arc length, but we're making our circle so small, we're looking for that infinitesimal change, that thing that happens at an instant. And so I'm going to cross multiply here. I'm going to say delta V is equal to delta L over R times V. Now I'm going to say, hey, I have a change in velocity. Well, let's do a change in time. And I'll divide by change in time. So I'm taking this and I'm going to divide it by time because that's going to give me an acceleration. And so I'll divide this by time. Delta L over delta T times R over V. But notice, delta L over T, that's a velocity. And specifically, it's the velocity that this thing is moving in. And so I get V over R times V or V squared over R. And this is going to be our linking equation, the centripetal or the radial acceleration, the turning acceleration in uniform circular motion is the speed, the linear speed it's going at, squared divided by the radius. Well, let's look at our units. A velocity squared is meters squared over seconds squared. And if I divide that by meters for R, I get meters over seconds squared. It's got the same units as acceleration, so it's in the right ballpark. And that's how we are going to begin our study of motion within uniform circular motion. Now remember, the uniform part is that linear speed we're going at. The absolute value of that speed is always the same. My circle's turning at a uniform rate. The only thing the acceleration does is turn. 